All right, what's good? Welcome to day five, no, week five. <laughs> day two feels like day five. Um, well, we're gonna talk about basically uh, sampling techniques and ethics and particularly focusing on the work of three producers. Um, Paul C., Large Professor, and Pete Rock, the soul brother number one. Uh, that will be our focus for today. So um, we'll talk about some of the readings, some of the songs that I asked you to listen to. We'll talk a lot about beat making technique. Um, and I will also be getting in the, the studio a little bit here um, to show y'all some of those techniques. So I'll explain them in some of the lectures, what they are, and then I'll show and explain them, um, you know, in my uh, makeshift uh, studio. So um, a couple things, you know, uh, this comes from the Joe Schloss chapter. Joe wrote uh, this book. He did an ethnographic study while he was at the University of Washington. Uh, where he talked to a bunch of beat makers there and wrote about why they do what they do, how they do what they do. And um, he had this great chapter on the ethics of sampling. Now, I want to stress that uh, I believe he did a lot of his research in the late 90s. And so a lot of the ideas expressed in this uh, chapter and that he writes about are these very um, sort of... <laughs> sort of 90s uh, ideology about sampling. I'm booting away chickens right now. They're bugging the fuck out of me. Seriously, girl, go on. Damn, yo. Um. Uh, no, no. Anyways, um, so these are some of the rules, so to speak, uh, from his interviewees and what they said and what he derived from what, from what they said. Okay, so uh, a couple of the, the things that he said. Number one, no biting. Okay, the whole, this, is, this is like a hip-hop, you know, basics rule. Don't steal other people's shit. Be original. Don't copy other people. You want to be unique. You want to be your own person, you know. Basically... And specifically in sampling, like, if you use the same record as someone, you better fucking, you better change that shit. You better use it in a different, totally different way. Because if you take a, a loop that someone hooked up, you know, say DJ Premier, something that's really known, you know, um, that another producer, you know, made a beat out of, and you, you use it in the same way, whoo! You know, that's a total bite. And that's, that's just a, like, that's a look down. You know what I'm saying? Number two. And again, this is, this is you know, you got to think. We're talking about like late 90s, early 2000s, right? You got to sample from vinyl. Now, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, and, and, and the producers in this talk about their reasonings for it. Number one, it's about tradition. And this tradition goes back to, you know, Herc. You know, Flash, Bam, Grand Wizard Theodore, the 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 pine, DXT, all the pioneering DJs. Like you use vinyl. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop comes from records. You know, so that's part of the tradition. The other thing is the sound quality. You got to understand, like, it's about the information that the medium contains. So, uh, to give you uh, an example. A, a wave file, like a CD quality wave file, contains 10 times more information than an MP3. We're talking information about levels, uh, and we're talking about information about uh, frequency, so bass, mids, and, and, and treble. Um, you know, and so uh, what these digital media try to do is replicate analog sound, which is the most um, authentic, you know, type of sound. It has all, like, when you hear my voice, you hear all of the tones of my voice. But when I record my voice to different media, you lose parts of that. So the most authentic to the, the sound that comes from my mouth or the sound that comes from a drum or the sound that comes from a horn is, is a vinyl record. I'll step off, yo. <laughs> is a vinyl record. It's the most authentic reproduction of sound that exists and 
um, that's a major reason why. Now, the other part about that is, you know, when you sample from a vinyl record, it just, it's, you have more, um, more ability to, you know, uh, EQ and process a, a vinyl record sample over like um, a sample from an MP3 or something you sample from YouTube that has way, way, way less information information in it. So that's just like a super important reason why. And it's the other aesthetics, the texture, the grit, um, the, war the warmth. <laughs> I kind of hate that term that a, that a record has, okay? Um, and the other idea right with this is like you got to dig. You got to dig in the crates. You want to sample shit that someone has never sampled before. You, know, you want to find new, new material. Now, this is a very old idea. Like, personally, if y'all sample from YouTube, whatever. Like, as long as it sounds good, it don't, mat it don't matter. But when you sample from vinyl, um, it's like, like if you sample the same sound from vinyl, versus the same sound from, from, from YouTube, right? And if we bring it back to the clay, the moldable clay sort of metaphor or analogy that I use, when you sample from YouTube, you have a palm full of clay. You can only sculpt so much with that. When you sample from a vinyl record, you have a mound of clay and you can just, you can, you can make so much more with it that sounds better. Um, that's one of the ideas. Um, yeah, don't sample for respect. So, uh, you know, if someone hooked up a loop and it's just incredible how it is and the song is incredible, you, you, don't, you don't touch it. You leave that shit alone um, unless you can flip it in a, in a totally different way. Seriously, step. Um, unless you can flip it in a totally different way than, than, than the original artist did. So a good example, seriously, Step, um, would be Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Pete Rock's uh, Troy, they reminisce over you, right? Which samples, and we'll talk about it, this, um, you know, Tom Scott and the California Dreamers today. Like, if you take that horn sample, it's like an iconic horn sample and you sample that and make a beat out of it, you better change the shit out of it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, or don't touch it. You know, it's out of respect for Pete Rock, like one of the kings, you know. Um, yo, you shouldn't be sampling comps, uh, like ultimate breaks and breeds, that breeds. <laughs> ultimate ba breaks and beats, right? Those compilations, and you shouldn't sample represses. Um, you should be sampling original pressings. Again, this is a very, uh, you know, elitist, I guess, like mentality now, but 20, 20 years ago, this was like the mentality of, of beat makers. It was like, you don't want to sample reissues. Now, the other reason why you may not want to sample reissues, other than the fact that it's a reissue, not an OG, it's got to be OG, you know, is that uh, a lot of reissues have been digitally remastered versus analogically remastered, meaning it's been digitized, it's manipulated digitally, it's not taken from the original master tapes and remastered on tape and then um, you know, use you know, uh, different ways of mastering that to put on vinyl. It's just like someone ripped, ripped a, a digital copy of it and pressed it to wax. Like, it's just gonna, not sound that good as the original. Now, in some instances, they re-release like official represses, and they sound ten times better, um, you know, than than the original. And that is what it is. But it's the whole idea of you got to use OG presses, okay? Um, the other thought too, and the the ethics here is you want to sample from different records. You never want to sample, um, you know. Uh, you know, you never want to. <laughs> you never want to get your drums, bass, horns, um, melodies, whatever, from the same record. You want to pull in different sources. So get your drums from, you know, a different uh, a different record. Get your, your your main loop from something else. You know, pull stuff from other places. Fuck 
fucking birds, man. Um, so that's just like an idea. Like you want to get your stuff from different songs. Pull a guitar lick from here, a horn stab from here. Um, you know, you don't want to take too much from 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 one one record. You know, you want to be pulling from uh, different sources. That's kind of like the 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 mentality there. So yeah, just. The music we listen to, we listen to, damn, a lot of stuff. Uh, Ultramagnetic MCs, that's early Cool Keith uh, music. We listen to um, uh, Super Lover C and Casanova, um, Do the James. That's, again, produced by Paul C. We listen to um, The Mad Scientist, Looking at the Front Door, uh, some Eric B and Rakim, produced by uh, Paul C., uh, we listen to uh, Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Uh, they reminisce over you and straighten it out. Some Nas, uh, produced by Pete Rock and a song produced by uh, Large Professor. Uh, we also listen to um, some Large Pro stuff. Yeah, I mean that kind of that kind of sums up you know a lot of stuff you know and. Uh, so like, what are some of the samesies? What are some of the differences? You know, I mean, really look at it. Uh, Musically, let's just talk about that. Darker samples, deeper, darker, you know, grimier sounding stuff, punchier, harder knocking drums, different style sounding drums, cracking drums, uh, louder, boomy bass lines, filtered bass lines, chopped up uh, samples, not just straight loops, but chops in there. Um, you know, just different, different kind of than a lot of the stuff we we've listened to in the in, in the last you know few few units. You know, 